If you want to know how a builder of audiophile loudspeakers with a bachelor in hearing and speech science sets up an audiophile system, then this is the video for you. In these room tour series, I show you the systems of my subscribers. Today I show you the system of Vic. Vic has a very nice system and he even had a short ambition to become an audiophile loudspeaker manufacturer. But because of some practical reasons, this did not happen. We do get to see some of his designs in this video though. Now normally with this series, people send me some raw video files of their system and I try to make a nice video out of that material. In this video, Vic was kind enough to get in front of the camera and give us a tour of his system. Vic is a photographer by occupation, so it looks and sounds great. I did try to enhance the experience by editing in some extra information, so I hope you appreciate that. Now before I hand it over to Vic, there's one thing I'd like to ask you. Vic is also struggling with a question about his system. And I hope that you, the people who are watching this video, I hope that you will help him with his quest. At the end of the video, I will explain what the quest is in order for you to be able to help him. So for now, enjoy the tour of Vic's system. Hello, hi, my name is Vic. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my stereo system. Uh, I've been an audiophile for a long time and I built speakers for a while uh, and I have a degree in hearing and speech science. So um, my front end consists of a MacBook Pro. I'm currently running YouTube Premium. Uh, I'm going to be going back to Tidal because they have higher resolution streams but uh, YouTube Premium has been a lot of fun. Um, I have a CD player, it's Marantz. I'll give you the model numbers for everything in the show notes. Um, but it's a lovely CD player. Both of them can go through my DAC, which is a Chord Mojo. And then that feeds a uh, vintage preamp. This is a Sonic Frontiers preamp. It has one tube inside. It has a beautiful warm sound. And I also have uh, a Class A solid state amplifier made by a company called Sumo. The model is the 9. Um, obviously I watch movies and TV here as well. If I like, I can pipe it through my stereo system. Uh, this particular TV has an excellent audio system, uh, even though it's a vintage old thing and there isn't a whole lot of bass, but these ribbon speakers, the treble and the mid-range is very nice. Sometimes I can just listen to this and keep my system off and it's still satisfying. Anyway, um, let's see. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my speakers. So. These are a pair of Snell Floyd standards, and they um, are the ones that we were listening to just a moment ago. These are of my own design. Uh, they have Jordan drivers. Uh, they're very lightweight aluminum drivers. They have a plain R or similar sound, not too dissimilar from a ribbon uh, because they're very lightweight. Um, I have a first order crossover uh, that causes a minimal phase shift which means that things image better and it also has a minimum amount of componentry so the signal path is relatively pure compared to other designs that have steeper crossover slopes if that makes sense um, this is a ported loudspeaker and this is not this is called an acoustic suspension with acoustic suspensions anyway you can tune the bass Q, they call it. Very interesting aspect to, to uh, loudspeaker design when you come across this. You're always trying to get good bass. It should be articulate and taut, not flabby and what have you. When, as soon as you start designing loudspeakers, you get to uh, desi des decide excuse me, uh, what the bass cue for your uh, woofer is actually going to be. And that bass cue determines how much ringing or flab there is in your design designers dial in a certain amount of flab like intentionally practically uh, you need a larger enclosure if you want to reduce that amount of bass ringing uh, an enclosure like this has plenty of room to keep the uh, speaker from ringing um, these are also a design of mine these are full range single driver uh, Jordan loudspeakers they also have a relatively large enclosure these have a bass cue, if anybody is into speaker design, of 0.6. Uh, 
and so do my floor standards. So they're fairly dry. 0.5 is absolutely martini dry. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is room acoustics. I'm a little bit of an imaging freak. I measure things out precisely. I find if my speakers are just a little bit off, the image is also quite a bit off. Um, my speakers are about five and a half feet from the rear walls. Uh, that seems to open up the sound stage. I've positioned them so that they don't have too much congestion in the center and they don't have a hole in the middle. So you work this dimension back and forth as you're listening until you get a nice spread uh, in terms of the image uh, width as well. Um, my room is relatively acoustically dead. Uh, if I clap my hands, you don't hear any ringing, right? It just stops on a dime. That's the way I think it should be. Not a complete anechoic chamber, but I have carpeting on the floor. That's a hard wall with a few absorbent things and something to break up the sound also here. I have some absorbent material over on this side, which you can't see. This wall is open. Some of the sound goes out completely. A stereo system shouldn't be in a closed room that doesn't absorb things well because it'll just reverberate. It's like another speaker enclosure. I don't think that's beneficial. So you get all that right and then you get a lovely stereo image um, and you can also uh, enjoy the music a little more easily. Well, that's about all I have to say. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Wow, thank you so much for this wonderful walkthrough. You know, I like Vic's system. I like the look of the room, his attention to detail and the philosophy he uses to make his system sound exactly the way that he wants it to. Well done. Now at the beginning of this room tour, I said Vic would like your help with a question. And here it is. In the video, you saw the big power amplifier from Sumo. This is a 70 watts per channel, pure class A power amp, so it runs hot. And with four ohm loudspeakers, you even have two times of 120 watts of class A power per channel. So it really runs hot. Now to cope with that amount of heat, the Sumo has a fan and that is where the problem lies. Vic still likes the sound of the amplifier, but he is fed up with the fan noise. So he likes the class A sound. You have seen what his system is like and he has a thousand dollar budget. His priorities are a lack of harshness in the sound and imaging capabilities. He has been looking for a replacement, but that was never a success and now he got a little bit stuck. So this is where you, the viewers, come in. Do you have any recommendations for Vic? It can be a new one or second hand if it's not older than 10 years. I would appreciate it very much if you would write your suggestions for Vic in the comments down below. And so we come to the end of this video and there's only two things I still want to say. One, the music at the beginning of the video was Hello Friend from the wonderful Maya Fadiva. And two, well, thank you for watching and see you at the next room tour. If you want your system featured on this channel, drop me a line at theaudiophilebarista at gmail.com.